So 20 years ago, I was adopted into a lovely little family. And prior to being adopted by that family, I was in the American foster care system. And to put it simply, the foster care system is horrendous. Um, I was one of the lucky few to get adopted while I was still young enough to be desirable. Um, I was like at the cusp, like anybody around like five, six years old, like as they get older than that, they start to become undesirable to anybody looking to adopt because you can't mold the child into your perfect little gremlin that serves you if they're, you know, already formed and they're already their own person. And so a lot of people don't want to adopt someone who's six, seven, eight, nine, and God knows, they definitely don't want to adopt a teenager. The teenager is not, not going to have any interest in being molded into the person they want the child to be. They are their own person, and if they've been in the foster care system or an orphanage for most of their life, they are a very bitter person. Um, so, when I was really little, my biological family was not great. Uh, my biological mother was a bad mother at the time. She was very neglectful. She didn't take care of us well, the house was in shambles, and she got into an argument with my biological father, and it was over the television. If I remember correctly, she was watching cartoons, he didn't want to watch cartoons. So his response was to go and smash the television. Police were called because of domestic disturbance, the police showed up. They saw the state of the place and immediately took me and my sister away. And then sometime a little bit later, um, had another sister born who was also then taken away and put with me and my other sister. And the three of us traveled through foster care together going from family to family. I don't remember exactly how many there were. Uh, my sister has documentation of it somewhere. I think there's like four or five families. and. These families weren't looking to adopt, all except the last one. The last one was looking to adopt. The others had their own kids, and they weren't looking to adopt anymore. They were looking to get money for, you know, housing us, because um, we were wards of the state. And it, if you foster a child that is a ward of the state, you get paid by the state to foster them. And then if you adopt them, you get paid for the entirety of their childhood. All the way up until they turn 18, you get paid every month. And they just wanted the money. So they gave us the bare minimum necessary for us to survive, took the money, pocketed the money, and then used us as an outlet for the punishments that should have been directed at their own children, because they could never harm their precious angel. Their precious angel broke something, they would hurt us as an example of what might happen if they did it again. It never happened to them when they did it again. And they knew that. They knew it wouldn't. We'd be with these families for a short period of time, and then we'd go on to the next one. One of them in particular, I have some very vivid memories of where there was a little wooden toy chest and I was playing with a little tiny matchbox car, a little just driving around the edge, probably Hot Wheels, I don't know. I don't know what brand it was, but it probably was. And I was just playing with a little car, driving around the tool chest, and their little demon child thought it would be funny to slam the chest shut on my hand. And it snapped my fingernail off completely. And to make sure that we didn't, you know, tell the social worker how bad things were and everything, the response to that was to reward us with a movie night in the room of the house that we were barred from ever entering, where it was like literally like they had like a cage locking off like the movie theater section of the house because it wasn't even theirs, it was their son's and nobody was ever allowed in there. But they opened it up and let us in to watch whatever movies we wanted for the rest of the night. And that was to get me not to talk about, you know, what happened. And the whole point of it was to make me forget, to make me you know, think of that day as a positive day. So when I was asked how things are going, I wouldn't, you know, tell them that their kids are treating me like trash. And 
then the next family, I believe it was the next family, there might have been one in between, but then another family, either way. They were just the worst people. To put it kindly, they were the worst people that I had been with, because you could not get up to go to the bathroom at night. If I woke up at 3 in the morning and I had to pee and I stepped foot out of that bedroom, I would be beaten for leaving the bedroom. So me and their son, we just pissed on the floor, but we'd get beaten for doing that too, so we had to hide it. Like, what the fuck? There was one point where we were playing with some toys and I made some contraption where I made like this really long thing and I got it to balance and I thought it was cool and I call over to their son and I'm like hey check this out and I turn and he was right next to me I didn't know he was right next to me I literally didn't see him I turned and it hit him in the face and he said ow he didn't start crying he wasn't actually hurt but he said ow and his mother came running into the room grabbed me by the leg dragged me across the house and threw me across the bedroom and then started beating me what the fuck is wrong with those people? That's the response to me accidentally having a toy bump into his face and getting an ow. He wasn't actually hurt. When I went back into the room, I asked him if he was okay. And he was like, yeah, it didn't really hurt that much. And he was a year older than me, too. So it's not like I'm some bully bullying their precious angel. He's bigger than me, older than me. And he wasn't really hurt. They had a daughter as well who would bite my sisters. I don't know if we... I don't know her name. I know his name. I'm not going to say it just for the sake of, you know, anonymity on his case. But I don't know their daughter's name. I don't know if my sisters know her name. Because we only ever referred to her as Bite Girl. Because that's how often she did it. She would just bite them constantly. And she never got in trouble for it. She was told not to do it, but she didn't get in trouble for it. They just wanted the money and then wanted an outlet, I guess. Um, that's how all the families were. Until the one that ended up ultimately adopting us. Uh, they were a wonderful family. They, It was just a man and a woman who just wanted to have some children. They didn't want three. They wanted two, but there were three of us. And they both didn't want to separate the three of us and also found that, you know... They really liked us, so they wanted to keep all three of us. And when the time came where it was like getting close to the point to where like they would actually consider adopting us, my biological mother managed to convince the courts that she could be a reasonable mother and they gave her back custody of us. We moved back in with her. And it was the same song and dance. She was still just as neglectful, still just as trash at being a mother. And we got thrown back in the foster care system again. And first dibs went to the family that had us previously. So they took us in again. And basically as quickly as they possibly could, after that, they adopted us. And this was 20 years ago that we got adopted me and my two younger sisters uh, 20 years ago today uh, as a matter of fact uh, I don't know what the title of this video is going to be it's just a little rant a little ramble about it and it's been a good 20 years there have been some ups and downs there were some times where I was you know wrongfully punished for things that didn't happen like the most vivid memory I have just in general, the most vivid memory I have is one day my friend called me, asked me if I could come over. I go downstairs to my dad. I I have the phone. I don't know how, I didn't know there was a mute button on the phone. I, I was a kid. I didn't know that was a thing. And so I would just hold the phone off to the side and like I put my thumb over the little talk thing, which doesn't actually stop them from hearing you. It just muffles it a little bit. And so I put my thumb over that and I asked my dad if I could go hang out with my friend and he said sure and the friend literally lived like one block away it was like we we lived like the house is here and then there's an intersection right here and then he lived over here like it's just just down that intersection house right there boom 
real quick, took a minute to walk over there. And I go, and I walk over there, and right after I arrived, it started raining. And the thing that I remember most vividly about that was ending the phone call and then putting the phone back on the receiver. That stuck with me. I don't know why it stuck with me at the time. And then a couple hours later when my dad showed up and basically forced me to come back home, insisting that he never gave me permission to go over there. And my friend confirmed, it's like, yeah, I heard him over the phone ask you and you said yes. Like, we were both sitting there, we, I have a witness to that. He insisted that it didn't happen, he forced me to come back home, and his smoking gun, his proof that I didn't do it, was like, well, what'd you do with the phone after you were done with it? I hung it back up on the thing, I remembered that. He's like, oh, really? Well, I found the phone sitting over here. It's like, either you didn't know where you found the phone, or because it had been two hours, someone else has touched the phone since then. Either way, I was wrongfully punished and forced to come home because my dad decided it and then just lied about where he found the phone or lied about not giving me permission, whatever he lied about. He doesn't remember this. I, I brought it up to him later. He does not remember this at all. But it, it is one of the most vivid memories I have. But even, even then, like, it's not abusive or anything. It's nothing compared to the very small piece that I have shared with you about the foster care stuff. That was just the tip of the iceberg. It, there was some far worse shit that happened that I'm not going to share. But that was, like, the extent of it. Like, the worst it ever got was being punished for things that I didn't actually do, and the punishments were never too bad for the things that didn't actually happen. Um, the worst one was from a misunderstanding, but because I'm a child, he's not going to listen to me that maybe he misunderstood something. He assumed he understood it perfectly, and I'm the one that made the mistake. I didn't. Um, growing up, I have always been way more mature than anybody else my age. I'll act, like, young and goofy all the time, just because I like it. Um, but I have always been way more mature than anybody else my age, because I had to be. When you're thrown into that system, you have to be. Like, I hated the world. The entire world. I hated everybody. Everything. I hated all of it. There was not an ounce of love in my heart. It was just all hatred because of that system. And that's what happens to anybody when they're just left in that system to rot. And then nobody wants them. But if people just gave those kids a chance, gave them love, it would open them up. They're going to be closed off. They're going to reject it. And that initial attitude towards any sort of affection gets people to be like, nah, I don't like this one, and then they just send them back, or they just have no interest in them in the first place because they're eight years old rather than two. It is a horrendous system, and I found out, um, this was years ago, I don't know the statistics now, I just know years ago there was a point where there were about 600,000 kids in the foster care system and there were enough gay families looking to foster and adopt in the United States that they could foster and adopt every single one of them but they were not allowed to and I know that like they've been like at least in some states, I don't know about all states probably not in all states, Alabama and them those states usually don't like um, you know, caring about the kids, actually. They say they do. And so they ban abortion because the kids are so important, and then they don't give a damn about kids in foster care, and then, you know, gays aren't allowed to adopt them. That's, that's their mentality. Um, but I know at least in some states they are allowed to, and I really hope that they are fostering and adopting the kids in the foster care system, because it is a horrendous system. Like, half the like, easily, half the people that are fostering kids in that system are doing it just to get money from the state. They're not doing it with intention of adopting the child. They're going to take the 200 bucks a month that they get, spend 50 of it on necessities for the kid, and that's it. Pocket 150 bucks a month, and all they had to do is just have that kid living under their roof for a couple months. That's what they do. And it is disgusting.
I hate them all. Every single one of them that does that, I hate them. And there's a special place in hell for them if they believe in that. And if they don't believe in hell, they believe in reincarnation or whatever, they're going to reincarnate as the lowest life form possible. Whatever horrible people reincarnate as, that's what they reincarnate as. And they will be stuck there forever. They believe in hell, they're going to hell. They believe in none of that. Hopefully whatever is actually out there punishes them for their misdeeds because they are horrible people. Like, they are up there with child abusers that go to prison and then get destroyed by the other inmates. The people that actively go around hurting kids and molesting kids and everything. The punishments that they receive from people in prison is what all of those foster parents that only foster for the sake of getting money and not actually caring for the kids, they deserve that too. Because let's say they don't actually abuse the child in that time frame, okay? They're going to, but let's say they don't, okay? Let's say they actually treat the kid with respect. The little kid gets treated with respect. They have the kid for six months. That kid is now six months older and is six months less desirable for somebody who would actually adopt them. Every single time that happens, that kid gets a little bit older. And every time that kid gets a little bit older, their likelihood of actually being fostered and adopted goes down. So if it happens for three years, like it did with me, you reach a point where they're at the cusp of no longer being desirable. I had two younger sisters, both of which were still in the desirable age range, especially the younger one. And so I was lucky enough to have that. If I didn't have those two younger sisters and I was on my own in that foster care system, I might not have been fostered past that like last family. I might have just kept cycling through people not being interested, just sitting in an orphanage forever, maybe going to a family once in a while that then just sends me back because I was a spiteful little shit. I hated everybody. And it took me a lot of years to get through that. A lot of years. I went to therapy for years for the anger issues, and even after that, it took many more years for me to get past it. And it's because of that system. I hate it. I hate it so much. I wish it was better. So, that's all for this video. It's just a little rant. 